Hello, welcome to the Film Society of Lincoln Center. Uh, my name is Nick Rapold. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Film Comment, and this is another Film Comment Free Talk. What there's there to say about High Life, uh, uh, we love it. We put it on the cover. It's a wonderful film. It was in the New York Film Festival. Uh, I think it's just an amazing piece of work, uh, you know, from everyone involved. Uh, please welcome Claire Denis and Robert Pattinson. Right. Well, thank you both for, for coming out. Uh, I think the last, time, uh, the last time we had each of you here for a Film Comment event, um, well, I mean, Claire, we did a Q&A for Let the Sun Shine In yes. last spring. Um, and, and Rob, we had a screening of Good Time, a film comment screening. Uh, I recently came across a, a Twitter photo of you from off the set of Good Time that I think had you sleeping in like a cage or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's my, I bring that cage onto every movie with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's now just part of the traveling uh, equipment you have. Um, I mean, High Life, it's, it's a film. Can I say something? Oh, please do, yeah. I think when you show this cover, it, it touched me a lot to see Robert with this cunning look, you know? That is such a beautiful cover. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I, I well, thank you. Very, it's yeah. a beautiful image. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's it's a beautiful a actor, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to compliment you all, all day, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting because like the mood of the film is very seductive, but you never know which way it's going to break. It, you know, it's, it's, it, it can get, it's a movie that's very much about, I mean, it's hard to escape it, that it's about death to, to a large extent. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. And life. And life, yeah. I mean, is, yeah. That, is that something that ever felt kind of, um, you know, op oppressive? As, or is that just something you have to kind of steer into when you're, stuck in space in, the, in that milieu. Yes, yes. I, in a way, I was thinking all the time about people, because it's a nightmarish thing for me, people who are in a submarine, you know? Oh, yeah. I always think this would be the worst place for me to be. <laughs> and I know that sailor, they, they can't stand it for 60 days, no more, something like that. Mm. And I thought, wow in space. Yeah. Rob, did you ever get claustrophobic in, in the course of the filming? Um, I don't know. I, I spend a lot of time just sitting in rooms by myself and I, I can, I can, I feel like I can just sit in a hotel room and just let a week go <laughs> by <laughs> very, very, very easily. Yeah. I, I think with, the, it, it, with this being on a very contained set, it just, it's quite uh, kind of meditative after a while. I think when we, we did the first camera test mm. and um, just knowing that even the camera test was in the main corridor of the, sh of the ship and feeling, knowing that because all, all the lights were just on a rig in the ceiling, there, was no, there weren't any really visible lights. Um, and knowing that that was how the light was going to be like uh, throughout the shoot, it was kind of... I don't know, it has a very strange effect on you having just one color light. Mm. It's like a, what's that artist, James, uh, the light artist, James Terrell. Oh, like yeah. It uh -huh. kind of felt a lot yeah. of the time like. Yeah. It's true. I, I was once, I think in Seattle, uh, mm. visiting an, an exhibition, James Terrell, mm. and I remember there was first the red room, the red mm. experience, mm -hmm. and it, it was really frightening. And then after the blue room, mm. and in the blue room, I wanted to stay for a long time. There was something mm. not relaxing, but so co cool, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You mentioned I can stay in my room for a week. And I remember, or two, also, or two weeks, I, and I remember a song I had always in mind, even as years go by, I never forget that song from Peach Boy, In My Room. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs because I think in my room, like in your room, there is something nobody else but you know, something we need. Mm -hmm. But to be in a submarine or in a spaceship, it's not your room. It's, it's a sort of space for ev everyone, you know? 
Yeah. It, I mean, it's a place where you are kind of confronted by yourself. There's no escaping you and there's mm. no escaping your memory. And confronted by the other, you know? Mm. You're not alone. In my room, it's something just to hear that I like it. Yeah. In my room. Yeah. Is it's that a it beautiful song. <laughs> <laughs> Is that also how you, in terms of like a creative process, do you really s total solitude or? Yeah. Yeah. It's a strange thing to say in my room where it's a modern thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. There was a time where nobody could say in my room. Oh, right, yeah. You know? Yeah. You, I mean, that's, that's the thing about mm -hmm. high life is that it's a forced society. Mm -hmm. That, like, there's, there's no being alone. There's no mm -hmm. real chance mm -hmm. to, to find yourself and to be your own being. Um, and because they're all people that are very used to trans or have transgressed and maybe are kind of more habitually transgressors, um, there's there's no limits, there are no boundaries. I mean, it, that's that's something that's probably a, a useful force to work off of, the feeling that the characters might do anything. Yeah, yeah I, I nod, but yeah. I, I don't know if I should. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you disagree, do, I mean, that, does that no, not... No, the, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, in my room. You were in the room. A moment of silence. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a project that uh, took a, a number of years to, to come into being. Um, and I mean, when you were finally, you know, shooting and it was actually happening, what, you know, were the, what was your, your biggest fear at, at that point? You know, once you were in that, you know, what, what, what were some of your fears about, about the film you were embarking on? You mean me? Yeah. My fear was... Oh, there were a million fear. I, I thought maybe I've been waiting too long, maybe it's gone. And, and, but because of Robert being here with us, uh, there with us to start the movie, and him trusting, I, I felt great, you know? Yeah. I felt great, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and Robert, how did you feel going into it because the movie uh, is it's very much like hitched to you you know like the, the, the I don't, again I don't want to say too much since people haven't seen it but um, you know you, you it's kind of starts with you um, and, and sticks with you even though there are other people there um, in terms of I, fear I mean I mean I definitely I feel like I have this pretty much the same fear every single time I start a movie I, I have I'll I'll like uh, my initial read of something like the, the initial kind of nexus of wanting to do it I feel like I have a flash of exactly how I want to do it I mean the closer you get to shooting you and up until about well up until the day before you start shooting when you have like the climax of going I have mm -hmm. ab not only I have no idea what I'm doing but you, so you suddenly have this terrible fear it's going to be a disaster after mm -hmm. it's like always like the day before yeah. I remember talking to Juliet Vinosh a week before we started shooting we went out to have lunch and I'm I just got myself into such a sort of tizzy about what, like, what I was supposed to be doing, and Juliet seemed so organised, and she'd got all her folder and notes everywhere and diagrams, <laughs> and I'm like, what are these diagrams? Like, how do you like? like <laughs> and I just had absolutely no clue. Um, but I think I, I you kind of realise it's sort of, and uh, it's. I mean, even with Claire's movies, like, I mean, even, I can really love her movies and not, I wouldn't be able to describe essentially really what they're about. Like, to, mm -hmm. like, Beau Travail, like, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what it, and I think that's the whole point of it being a movie is that you can't, yeah. you, you have to say it as, you have to, the language is the movie. Is the movie, right. And like, and I think if you're, you don't need to know how to, you don't need to have a very prescribed way of thinking before you start it, and yeah. I, I think with this, and uh, and once you kind of got onto the onto the onto the rhythm of how, of the shoot, it, you know, there was so many scenes where it didn't. It's so much more in, intuitive and instinctive than anything yeah. else. Like, yeah. If I can say about beau travail, I don't want to explain anything because I don't know myself. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> beau travail was really something I felt when I read. Billy Bird, long time ago, that the uh, master of arms, it's called Clagart in the novel, I guess, um, in the film, it's the character interpreted by Denis Lavant, 
is regretting. He, he wants to be loved and respect, and it, it's a long regret, you know? Mm. Yeah. And, and that's all I had in mind, really, you know? Yeah. The yeah. regret of not being the solid one, the one you can trust, and the only one uh, that can be trusted, nobody else. And s that's it. Yeah. But, but I mean, for me, if I rem try to remember, when we start shooting um, High Life, the you know, Robert came, we were in Köln, and Robert is so cool and gentle, but little by little, by the time we get to the first day of shooting, you transform yourself so much. You became a, not only because you shave your head, but <laughs> no, no, I mean, something was like, um, you were getting older and um, tough, not the same person at all, no. Mm. You became Monte in, in those two weeks before shooting, I remember, and I was impressed by that, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's not a psychological thing, I never explained to him, you know, what is your character about, blah, blah, blah. But, mm -hmm. but something was changing in him, so he did all the work, actually. Yeah. No, I mean, it's true. Yeah. I mean, it, what struck me about watching it again recently is also how much Monty changes over the course of the movie. I mean, just, uh, again, it has a kind of different structure than you might expect. But at points, you can be so gentle in the, in the very beginning when you were with the baby. And th but then when we go back a bit, with some of the flashbacks, he can, you're, you know, that character is very hard. You know, he's still a very hard, and so it seems the fatherhood really kind of changes him. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a thing as well. There's one thing which I always found quite interesting about um, people who've done violent crimes or something. Mm -hmm. There's a, I don't even really know how to describe it, but I remember I was watching a lot of people on, on death row and stuff, and, uh, uh when you kind of ask someone about their crime, some people there's a there's there's a hardness and a, and a but it, it is a, it's a slightly different it, it's, it's a different facial language if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like when yeah. the scene when there's a scene when uh, my daughter when she grows up she finds my criminal record and asks asks mm. me about it and I my you know, crazy girl yeah <laughs> and there's something it's kind of like when 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 your life has been incredibly hard it's very there's no need to apologize for anything. There's no need to explain anything because it's it's mm. it's so harsh that it, it just sort of levels everything out. And it's kind of if that yeah. makes any sense. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. And it's kind of and it's. But I always found that interesting when there's there's a there's an almost alien quality to someone to people who've done things which are outside the realm, outside the normal laws of uh, of society and yeah. just human behavior. They have a sense of possibility. That can be kind of alien because it's yeah, and I feel you can't yeah. you because yeah, they've done something which which right. you will not be able to relate to until until you've done it. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Claire, you you you've described the film a little bit as a kind of um, you know the spaceship as a kind of prison. Yeah. Yeah. It is one actually, except uh, they use the people in that ship to to test thing, you know, but mm. it's a jail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And I, when, I was, when I was looking at the way people were acting there and, and speaking, it almost felt like they, they were talking as if they were in, in, a, in a prison, you know, and it seemed there was a hint of genre in that, you know, that they're kind of talking in this kind of hard-boiled way a little bit. Um, but uh, I don't know. Is that, is that something that kind of went into the writing, giving a feel of that? or? Well, first of all, I start writing in French. Ah, mm -hmm. The script was written in French, and little by little, we had this translation made. And thanks to the people I was working with, like Andy. But I mean, the, the feeling of being, I didn't have to tell myself they have to be speaking tough words because they are, uh, they come from a jail. I mean, it was in the process of being there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It, it was like a, a normal thing. I don't know. Mm. I cannot explain very well. 
my films in, in general. Um, mm. I think I, I realize, uh, no, I have no explanation. Uh, that's that. sorry, I, I would sorry, never want to make you explain your films. To say nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that kind of seems to crop up here and there is, is the feeling that time is running out for characters, you know, that the time is running out for them. Um, yeah. That there's, I you know, think. Yeah. This time thing is interesting because they have not, they have no, their time is not the same that the time on Earth, you know. Mm -hmm. So is it a time that is uh, longer or a time that is shorter? Is their body are going to be um, destroyed faster than if they were on Earth? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but the time thing is apparently. Um, the most important thing for this kind of story, like yeah. in space, you know, where time is so important. And even in a, a black hole, I can say that, although I'm not sure I understand, w let's say you could enter a black hole. This mm -hmm. is not proof, but let's say you could. If you could go till the end of it, some people believe there might be another universe or other universe, you know. It has many theory about that. But one thing for sure is that when you reach this limit called the singularity, that's where time and space come to zero. There is, mm -hmm. and I think it was the best image for, that's the end of the movie, eternity. Mm. Right. But although I don't understand what it is. Yeah, I don't. Know? I have no idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think nobody yeah. can yeah. really feel what it is. Yeah. But I think it's probably something like a term. Yeah, just thinking about the infinite, mm. it'll just kind of make your head explode. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it, as, I mean, a scientific idea like that is almost the closest you can get to something spiritual without being spiritual in a way. Um, that it was something interesting in the movie. I, I, I love these scenes uh, where you have to check in with the computer every, 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 whatever it is, every day in order to be every alive. 24 every hours. 24 hours. It felt like some kind of secular prayer, you know? Yeah. You have to say everything, I don't know, that's going on. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if that's at all. Yeah, it's a sort of code to yeah. reset the machine, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, Rob, Robert, you you have been a fan, I know, of Claire Denise films for a while, because uh, I remember when when I interviewed you about Good Time, and I asked you what you've been watching, you had said you had just binge watched. I don't think you used the word binge, but you watched almost all of her films the previous weekend or something. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember. You don't have to. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It's. Uh, uh, <laughs> I remember doing doing the meeting with you in LA, and uh, there's this. Oh, what is the video? I think it's uh, there's a video store in LA, which is great for um, uh, just kind of unknown film. <laughs> <to laughs> I know. I was trying to think of a nice way to say it. <laughs> difficult to find films, and I and I, 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 I special I do, films. I remember, I Special remember going films. in there and like getting the you, they had their entire collection there and I was just like wow and I would just get like the entire shelf and the guy's like big meeting coming up just curiosity oh uh, but yeah um, no I was always, yeah. but I'd, I'd seen I'd seen white material years and years before <laughs> and then uh, seen Bertrand Chocolat and like but it was really white material because I just like things which. Um, it just feels like such a contained world and it, f mm -hmm. it just felt very authentic. It didn't feel like there was, if you just shot in a particular direction, if you moved off to the side, then it would just, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's kind of why I like the Safties as well. When, you, when I saw um, um, Heaven Knows What, like it felt oh, like yeah. there's, a, there's a seamlessness between the, the, the plot and, and the world around. And I always really, I've always loved that. Yeah. And I think it's really, really difficult the to do. Because you mentioned that, I think uh, when we were in Cameroon with Isabel shooting white material, it was like also a space program, you know, because we had, the, in the story, there was this thing that she didn't want to leave 
the plantation until uh, she wanted to wait for the cher uh, coffee cherry to be ri ri uh, ripe mm -hmm. the bean, yeah. to collect them, mm -hmm. not to lose all her money. And I remember we were like in a, in a spaceship in a way, you know, and Isabel, um, she was like a coffee soldier, you know. I mean, sh I remember <laughs> she was, um, she loved to dry, to drive the tractor, and she was training every day. I mean, she she gave us a, a very great reason, and I, I think there there was something like that in in high life, you know, mm. a mission. Yeah. Um, a mission of being alive. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe we can talk a bit about like the, d the directing process in terms of director, actor. Um, I was reading somewhere that, um, Claire, you, you know, you like to be able to almost pose people a certain way or, or, or mold them by moving them, you know, and, um, but that's something that you're, you're a little sometimes hesitant to do. You weren't, you weren't sure whether you would do, would do it with, with Robert, like putting his arm in a certain way or something. No, I, I didn't know Robert at all. I mean, we mm -hmm. never worked, and I were, I'm, I'm shy, and, and we are discreet, per, both of us. I mean, we are not, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and Me I neither. don't know, I, I had to tell him, you know, maybe I had to touch you, maybe, in the process of shooting. I, I didn't want him to be uh, shocked by that. Because me, I'm so used to touch everything, the props, the, the actors, the camera. I, I, I have to be, I have to touch. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, it's so abstract to stand by a camera and to wait for things to be done. I have to, to be somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. of the process, just to feel real yeah yeah but i'm not touching so much i mean it's yeah. i'm a discreet person <laughs> you know um, no I, I didn't mean to suggest it was anything no 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 no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. there's a weird but i'm um, um, you know it's like the props you know you have to put the pr mm -hmm. uh, the people who do props they hate me because i'm always <laughs> Oh, that's no, true. it's true. Yeah. You remember. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never seen a six foot five German huge man <laughs> almost reduced to tears <laughs> 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 every day. <laughs> As you move things and everything. Yeah. Uh, I, there was one. I mean, there's an interesting because I, that I always wanted. I always like the kind of. I, mean, I keep saying this thing about like the way bodies look and stuff, and I wanted to kind of do that in this, but like. Mm -hmm. But there's a strange thing as well where you don't want to, as soon as you want to say things about physicality, it, it's so, it can so easily go into things which are sort of vain. Mm -hmm. And I remember that doing, there was that one, there was a sculpture I saw in some um, uh, museum in Ch Cologne, mm -hmm. which was a woman who was breastfeeding her child, but it was like a really interesting kind of pose. And like uh, when I, I saw that and I was like, I really, that I know I have to hold the yeah. baby like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and it has to be about like flesh on flesh, like with yeah, baby's yeah. flesh and all this stuff. And like, mm -hmm. I, and it's, if you if you say it, this, if you said it to one person, like, it'd be kind of an embarrassing thing because it's like I really want to like, I really want to be seen in this particular yeah. position. There's no mm -hmm. there's no particular meaning. I wouldn't be able to explain the meaning behind it, but I would be embarrassed to ask a lot of people about that. But like, the fact that Claire kind of understands that, and also just kind of there are certain yeah there are certain images which I kind of really. I just sort of knew there was a shape, mm -hmm. and I, and I think a lot of people. There's something kind of backwards about that as a perform mm -hmm. as a performance in a lot of ways because you're like, if you've already, you know, it's, it's so in, it feels sort of inorganic, but it's not inorganic, and it's yeah. it's like, it's, I don't know. There's something, and it was, and I wanted to do that a lot. Like I remember with a lot of the scenes with, I mean, I remember with you <laughs> with you, with Eureka sitting in the, we were doing the the the, uh, the computer. Um, whatever it's called, the, the report. Oh, yeah. ah. mm -hmm. And uh, there were some scenes, we did, there were about four scenes where we were doing yeah. that. And 
I got kind of self-conscious thinking like, well, it's going to be boring if I just, if I'm just sitting at the table. So I, I mean, I was, <laughs> I was getting more and more extreme with just sitting into a chair, being like, <laughs> becoming like a sort of contemporary dance. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I don't think any of this was like one moment of it used, but I mean, it was like absurd some of it, but like the fact that it's allowed at all and no one kind of, you know, no yeah. one took the piss or anything. It's, it's you really of, wanted to remake, sit, reinvent, Sitting. Sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, if I, I, I'm not going to describe things because you have not seen the movie, but mm. I remember a moment that are extremely physical when you carry the bodies out. Mm. And they are 80, mm. you are carrying them, and then when it's done, you just stand, nothing, and yet so much, you know. Me, I was feeling so much the, the weight of the process of separation, you know, was strong. And I think you immediately understand. It was great not to have to tell you. We hardly spoke, you know, you knew everything, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that then it makes me a little curious also just the feeling of space and um, where the bodies are you know put um, I mean you know as uh, thinking visually as, as, as a filmmaker what how did you think of how to approach the blackness of space because it's very cinematic but in some ways not I don't know to be honest I I trust this guy, Aurélien Barrault, who was the astrophysician, he kept screaming at me and says, no, no light, no uh, sort of cloud, no stars. You see nothing because you go at such a speed oh. that there is nothing to be seen. It's mm. not like to be in a train and you w watch <laughs> the landscape going by. No, uh -huh. this is, does not exist. Oh, okay. So, uh, it was a little bit frustrating for me. I had imagined mm. a sky full of stars and stuff. Uh -huh. and But then I, I sort of believed him. I thought, he's right. So there was nothing but black, mm. uh, actually. And it was very moving also, yeah. this, mm. when you were repairing, you know? It's frightening. Yeah. It's still even on the set, there was yeah. a... Yeah. Mm. This the void, mm. no avoiding the void. Um, yeah, um, I mean, it. I. This is kind of a random thing, but I. I. I, I like that. To keep. Well, maybe I shouldn't talk more about the movie. Are people like annoyed that we're talking about the movie? No. no. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, there. There's a great scene. Like er, this is very early on, but one way that you keep the uh, the, the baby early on occupied is, is with movies. And this detail that I love is that the first time the baby really cries is when the movie's over. Mm. So <laughs> I don't know, I felt like it, it had been made by real cine movie lovers. <laughs> um, well, I think maybe it'd be a good time if we uh, get some questions from the audience. Uh, so let's see. Um, I see a hand in yeah, the back there. Somebody here. Yeah, if you can just wait till you get the microphone. Are you okay? Hi, uh, this Hello. question's Hello. for Rob. So you filmed Remember Me at my high school 10 years ago, and I noticed that you were an executive producer on that film. And I know that you wrote and directed a short for a GQ called Fear and Shame a few years ago. And I want to know if you have any, you've been doing a lot of acting recently in the last few years, and I want to know if you were eventually gonna get behind the camera like Claire. Mm, directing. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean. I mean, it's weird. I can't really claim properly. Like, exactly. Don't remember me. I was like, I was so nervous when that movie was coming out. Like, it was. I really only came on as a supposed producer, like, sort of after the fact. Like, I, I don't know. I was just. I was so kind of panicky about the whole thing. I don't know why. As I and I didn't want to let go of control. And like, but now I'm. I'm, I'm not so. I'm not, I don't mind letting go of control at all. Um, and the fear and shame thing was literally written in like an hour like in the car. And I, I like it. I like that kind of you know when it's just really the sort of problem solving. I don't know. I find it very difficult to when something's uh, 
right you know you you're you're the one who comes up with the idea and and to get it all to fruition and then and then have it out there like it's so difficult for me to find um something which you can i don't know really stand but it's like getting a tattoo it's like why i couldn't like it's like i couldn't think of something which would mean enough to me which which you tattoo on yourself <laughs> like um <laughs> whereas with you know when you work with and also the movies i really like and not it's not like i'd saw claire's movies and thought oh that's something I wish I'd thought of it's something which is so it's really I, I know I'd never have thought of it and that's why I'd want to I'd want to work with someone like that and that's but like um I don't know I would kind of maybe it's it's much it's much more difficult than, 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 <laughs> than it seems <laughs> um maybe up here hi so I was just wondering if either of you found anything difficult about filming a movie so long with such a young baby because I know Scarlett was like a year old on this film. Um, no, I mean she was. She was a I diva. Right? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's always easy. People always say like, "Oh, don't work with animals and and children." But I just always, unless the child is just specifically annoying, but like it's, I always find it. I, I, like, I, I always find it like way easier because it's just kind of he just. Like Scarlett's just, it's, I mean, she, every single take she's doing something which you're just, yeah, you just, well, you can just have something to react to. I mean, and also she's not, it's not like you're playing with another actor where you can sort of judge her performance. I mean, it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's just it's pretty natural. You, you weren't giving her notes. Yeah, no. you <laughs> Like, it's only you who could mess up. <laughs> That's the truth. I, I think she was also, although she she learned how to walk on, on the mm. set, but she was oh. no more like a, like the other little girl we, we've met. She, she was so alive, mm. so reactive. When you came in the morning with her in your arm, she would wave to the crew, <laughs> you know? Mm. Uh, so she was open to people. Mm. She was not afraid. Oh. To the point and where... And she was also greedy. She liked to eat. <laughs> you could have her eat all the time, uh -huh. you know, she's, she, <laughs> she did, by, by the end of her, her, her sh the shoot for her, she wouldn't stop waving at the, at the yeah. camera. <laughs> so it literally became impossible every single take because she'd be saying hello to everyone the, the entire day. <laughs> Such a great little girl, really, really. Yeah. Where, where, where did you, where did, how did you find her? She was just... You find, you cast her. Oh, you, she, you cast the baby? She, we had two, we had two other, we had two identical twins oh, yeah. um, who I met the night before and we just did a real, they couldn't be separated from each other. They were there on other. the set for a week but yeah. you really had time to, to meet the, uh, the yeah. day before. And they were just absolutely terrified of me and, and they wouldn't, <laughs> they, I, they, I couldn't, if I would hold them, they'd be absolutely screaming and screaming. <laughs> and I did, I tried for like five hours, like working with their mom oh and wow. like, the only thing they liked me doing was chasing them around and being scary when I, <laughs> and like, and that's literally the only way. And I guess, yeah, they, they like, they like to be terrified of me. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, 10 p.m. the night before the first day, we were like, we, had a, we need a baby. <laughs> we need a baby <laughs> night right now. Yeah. And my friend, one of my best friends in London, I mean, literally flew across the, the first flight the next morning. Wow. Like, okay. It was a kind of leap of faith a little bit. <laughs> we yeah. did it on our own in, yeah. in the hotel lobby because I, I, I have to tell you, I, those twins, I couldn't stand them. <laughs> I had told, no, I, I had told the, the, the production, I'm not going to shoot with those girls. I'm not going to shoot with those girls. But nobody believed me. They thought the film has been postponed so many times. She's going to shoot. Come on, come on. And then, by chance, he, he told me in the evening, on the Sunday night, I can't, I can't. I said, oh. Yeah. Thanks God, I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh. I did like the ca I forgot the casting process, but for the older Willow, Des Hamilton was casting it. I mean, some of, the, I mean, some of the girls were pretty. I mean, it was incredible. Some of the girls who just flew out. Yeah. It was like one of the strangest casting processes because, like, 
We get these girls, the kind of 13, 14 year old girls who had these incredible faces, but I was saying like, Des, where did you find this girl? He's like, I was in a McDonald's <laughs> in, in Birmingham and I, she was in the line in the McDonald's and I just took a photo of her and just sent her out to Germany. <laughs> like she, she's like never acted before, had no interest in acting. Oh. And this girl's like sitting in the screen test, like, absolutely terrified, like, she's, like <laughs> trembling. Oh my <laughs> God. It was kind of a bit, but like, yeah. I get where he was coming from though. It was, it was kind of amazing to do a casting process like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, terrified in space. <laughs> but Not the one we good. kept, I cast her yeah. two mm. years before, so I knew she was. She was always oh, yeah. amazing, yeah. Hey Rob, uh, last year I worked on set with your co-star from Good Time, Buddy Duress. I was wondering if you had any unique experiences working with him. Yeah, Buddy's the best. I mean, it's, initially in, in Good Time we were supposed to we were supposed to play brothers that um, in the first draft of the script, and I thought he was so good in having those what, and I was like, yeah, he's, I think he's just such a kind of like naturally gifted actor, like, uh, and uh, no, he was great, like really, really, really good. Um, it was kind of, it's, a, it's again, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's kind of why I wanted to work with the Safdie as well, in the same way working with, I mean, I guess he, he'd already done that one movie, but he still had that kind of aspect of uh, sort of like, you know, he don't he's done, he's done one movie, so it, 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 he wasn't seeing himself as as a full professional actor at the time. I mean, he definitely is now. He's kind of realised what his talent is now. But uh, I know I sort of love doing scenes with someone. Like I remember doing the, the big end scene with him in Good Time, and I, mean, I think it was the end scene. And uh, we'd be arguing about a character thing, and he'd and he'd be like, "No, nah, I wouldn't do that." And it's like, "Well, yeah, it's not you though." Is that fuck that? <laughs> okay, it's like I wouldn't do it, and I'm like, and it's kind of, it's like amazing just to see like, and there's there's no, there's no delineation between the character, and I was like, wow, because it isn't him like that part, like, but he would fully claim it. Um, it was, it was really, yeah, it was a really fun person to work with. Yeah, um, I just sort of jumping off from that. I mean, the the movie has, you know. It shows a lot of things that might happen in sp in, sp in a situation like this. I mean, I was Claire, w w Was there any sort of boundary you were afraid to cross at any point in terms of what what you would show, or? Yeah. This is a question. Oh, for, for me, for me, for you. Sorry, oh. yeah. So could you repeat? It? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I, I, were, I was trying to, col to connect it to Robert. Oh yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I was just because. Well, yeah. Robert's character does some interesting things. A lot of characters do some interesting things in the movie. I was just curious. You know, th there's a lot of transgress, tra taboo behavior in, in the movie. I was curious if, if there's any sort of boundary. You know, did you ever have, have any fear that you would kind of go go too far, or whatever that would mean? Or you really wanted to? No, because yeah. the the taboo is somewhere in the story. It, it's it's not mm. happening. You know, it's yeah. like something possible. You mm. know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think it was always. That's why the film exists, in a way, yeah. you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, here, we actually skipped over a person here in the second row, yeah. Um, this is a question for Claire. Uh, as Rob said, sometimes you can't conjure up some of the situations as you did in High Life, so can you speak about your writing process? Writing process? Yes. Uh, First of all, there must be something that happened before the writing process, like the in my room process, something that is um, suddenly few ideas or something I realize exists in my mind for such a time. It's probably something that could be a film doesn't have to be a film, but I have to experience on my own without writing just to think about it. And then the writing process is when I'm more or less sure of myself about the project. Not sure the script is going to be easy to write, but that it's the good direction for me. And, and the writing process is um, 
normally it, it's really solid when at, at least one scene is believable for me, when I can see one scene. If it's just scenes, words, dialogue, description, and I have no vision of it, it's not something I can feel, then I know it's the wrong direction. I need at least one solid scene. I, I say, wow, this is it. This, I, I want to film this. And then I can go on to a next scene, you know? And sometimes that scene is not the opening scene. Uh, I, I remember in Annette and Bonnie, it was the, the last one, you know? But it has to be something solid. I said, wow, now, now we are talking. This is something, yes, I, I, I believe in that, you know? But then the process of writing, uh, it's maybe messy with me. Uh, I don't have a... Sometimes I have a structure, sometimes sometime it's a mood, sometimes it's almost a, a shape, you know? But it has to exist as a whole. And then I can go into scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A shape is, is a good word for beginning a script, I guess. A sort of shape, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I mean, for High Life, was there an image that you had in mind that was like the first image that came to mind with the with the writing of the story? Yeah, that's the beginning, the garden, uh -huh, the, the garden. baby, and screaming, and the father repairing the ship. This mm -hmm. I knew it will never change. It was there mm -hmm. for good. Of course, I knew the end also, but. This was solid enough for me to never change it. Mm, yeah. mm. All right, another question, maybe in the back on the left there. Right or wrong, you know, it's not yeah. a question of being secure. Right, yeah. No, I love that scene because it's like a domestic scene, mm. <laughs> you know, promote. Uh, this question's for Claire. Um, I saw your film Vendredi Soir at uh, BAM earlier this week which oh, I thought I was excellent. And we, we me, here. Mm. Oh, sorry, oh, in, the, in the top left here. there, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, so yeah. see you. So <laughs> and, um, but from what I understand, that film was somewhat of a departure, at least, um, maybe in the eyes of critics. I don't know if it was for you back then, but from what I can tell, I haven't seen High Life yet, but it seems that High Life is also a step in a, a different direction for you in some ways, and I'm, I'm curious if in the making of this film, and also now that it's been finished and it's being released, and there have been a number of retrospectives in this city particularly, um, how, how this film has made you reflect on sort of the, the span of your career and, like, and how, how far, if you feel you've come very far as a filmmaker and artist since, uh, since that time before. Uh, <coughs> I have not completely understood, but uh, more or less. <laughs> but I have to say, and you tell me if I'm wrong in my answer. Uh, Friday night, is, it's a strange thing. I was offered a script written by Jean Renoir, the French director, and it was uh, the last script he wrote. And it was, he did it for his, the memory of his father, the painter, Renoir. And it, it take place before the First World War in Paris, like in 1910, something like that. And it's about a, a guy that is in his 30s uh, from a rich family. He, is, he has a wife and a child, but he is going twice a month or even maybe more to the Brussels uh, as a something to do, you know, it's not the only one. It's like a way to live, you know? And he, he get to that new place and he, he, he met with a prostitute and he immediately fell in love with her. And 
so much in love that he decided to hire an apartment in the northern Paris, not in a very rich district, and ask her to, to live there and to be his wife there, you know? Although he, he, he was going in and out to his own family in a very nice district of Paris. And then he had told his wife he, he would go for a month or so, you know? And, and after a month, he, he, he told uh, this prostitute, um, thank you very much, it was great, thank you. Now I have to go back to my family. And she take a knife and, uh, you know. This is what happened to Renoir? Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, he, he, he was inspired by, <laughs> by <laughs> one of the model of his father. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I'm his father sorry. was painting a prostitute, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, and okay. this was the script, the oh. story. And it was very beautiful. He wrote it, Jean Renoir wrote it for Jeanne Moreau. And uh, it was extremely beautiful. And Jeanne Moreau wanted to direct it. And then she felt she could not. And I start working on that project. If you tell me if I'm too long. Yeah? No, this is a great story. Uh, I mean, and, I and I start working on the project. And then I realize, it, of course, it has to be a period film before the First World War with a carriage, horse, and and suddenly, it was a moment of my life, I said, oh, no, 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 I, I can't do a period film in this moment of my life. This, this story is great, but I cannot be that wide with a lot of horses and st uh, private street and uh, wardrobe and, st no, I was not sure I could go at that moment. Some other moment of my life I could, uh, but not at that moment. I, and I, I was working with, uh, I had a friend, uh, she was a writer, a very great writer. And I was in a cafe with her and I said, you know, I'm sorry to say, but it's, great sto it's a great script. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not going to r ride horses, carriage and stuff and all this. No, it's not for me now. And she said, oh, but Claire, what do you want to do then? I said, oh, I don't know, the minimum, small, very small. She said, small like what? I said, just a man and a woman in a car today. She said, really? said, yes, nothing else. And she said, mm-hmm. And the next day she brought a, the, the tr uh, treatment or something? The or? treatment of her next novel she was going to publish. And it was a night of strike in Paris where a woman was driving and met, meeting a man, you know? So it takes place in a car between a man and a woman. I read it and the next day I said, yeah, this is exactly what I want to do. <laughs> exactly that, nothing else. Just to be in a car with a man and a woman. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, it, if it's a great film, but me, I felt so thrilled not that I didn't like Jean Renoir's script, it was so beautiful. But it was not, you know, also the way she plunged the knife in her s stomach in front of him. I, I was not strong enough at that time of my life to do that, you know, mm. as opposed to Friday night. Mm. And also Friday night was great for me because I could use uh, a woman who was a comedian, with a comedian and a director, not an actress, and someone I admire a lot and I love a lot, you know? So it was a combination of happiness for me. 
Mm. Is, is it a, a good answer for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was. I so, yeah. I'm asking because I hardly understand your question. <laughs> yeah, I, th <laughs> I think I think it answered many questions, um, and we're all. Yeah, it was a great answer. Yeah. Um, but I, I think we're actually coming to the end of our time, unfortunately, uh, here. But I, just as a kind of a closing question, um, I'm, I mean, uh, what, what are you going to be doing next? Are you going to take a break? Are you working on a new script or for each of you? I am trying to finish a script, and I will do location scouting for a film that is if, 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 it's always um, something I wanted to do for a long time, um, adapt a book written by Dennis Johnson. Uh -huh. And it happened that Dennis Johnson died while we were shooting in Köln. Uh, wow. Yeah, and I told Robert about it, yeah. Wow. And I hope Robert will be in it. Well, so there we go. <laughs> let's, let's make it happen. <laughs> and, uh, and Robert, what, what are you jetting off to next? It is not going to plunge a knife in <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm about to start a Christopher Nolan movie uh, in like a month or something. Okay. Um, it's massive, massive, massive thing. Massive and top secret. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, that's that's all the time we have. Before and we need small and not top secret. <laughs> 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 but oh, fantastic. Okay. Uh, well, thank you both so much. Be a French director. <laughs> We, we can't end on that note. <laughs> I think it's wonderful to be a French director, for, um, to have your films, and thank you both so much, so much for this. Thank you.